Hi, I'm Ami Shroff and I'm a flair bartender and a juggler by profession. And uh, for fun, I like to do various other things like sometimes climb mountains or walk on a slack line or uh, try new things and skills I've never learned before. Right now, it's been plants lately. And uh, yeah, I'm a mix of all of that. Bartending started for me back in 2003. Uh, I started, I entered the profession professionally, I would say. And uh, although um, and a movie had sparked my interest, which was cocktails, uh, where Tom Cruise flips some bottles, very basic flare moves, which really fascinated me. And there were like these three moves that I learned, like a hand spin, a back toss, and you know, a little side pass um, from that movie. So when I, many years later, it, in 2003, when I was 18 years old, met this flare bartender, showed him what I can do and told him like, let me come assist you behind the bar. And that's how it pretty much started for me and learned all along the way, on the job, on the internet. It just comes very naturally, maybe like to what interests you, you know, just kind of go for it, uh, to be curious about something and then explore it. And that's how bartending started for me. And, I, and it, it, you enjoy it. That's why you kind of keep doing it. And uh, as you keep learning more and get deeper into it, it gets even more fun. Uh, and I think that's how it became a profession at some point. It started off as a hobby. It started off something fun I was doing. And uh, along the way, I learned on the job. And um, yeah, I just kept doing it. Somehow I didn't stop. That's how it started for me. Um, so yeah, every drink has some kind of a story like how it might have gotten created. It could have probably just been a bartender uh, fixing something that a guest likes or experimenting and creating something of their own. And uh, it could otherwise have some very interesting stories also. Like there's one example of um, a, a cocktail called Harvey's Wallbanger and the bartender would make this particular recipe for this guest who would always order it. And it was basically just a mix of orange juice and vodka with some galliano. And one day when Harvey had to, way too many, he kept banging into all the walls and that's how it became the name of the cocktail, Harvey's Wall Banger. So yeah, that's one little funny story. The Long Island has a very interesting story as well. So bartending allows me to play with multiple different flavors, experiment, be creative. Uh, you can give a story of your own to a cocktail, like what inspired those flavors, what inspired the presentation of your cocktail or the, the way you want it to taste, uh, the mood it kind of brings. So, and inspiration can come from anywhere and uh, cocktails is quite, can be quite inspiring, like ingredients and playing with flavors can be quite fun and inspiring. Whereas also the acrobatics of it and the jazz, like the flair that you add to the profession, uh, is is what fa fascinated me and pulled me into the profession. So flair is something that is very dear still to my heart and, and it also inspired the juggling arts which I stepped into much after. So yeah, I'd say flair, mixology and juggling, all three. Mm. It's very tricky I think to come up with one big experience that changes your life. There's so many, a mix of so many experiences that can influence us. Somehow, uh, like maybe the one big ones can be, I, I, I suppose, when you lose somebody close to you, like when I, maybe I lost my dad, like, you know, it was a very life changing experience. Um, when I've lost anyone that's been close, it was uh, like a grand aunt I really was very deeply in love with. And there are, uh, yeah, friends you sometimes lose. So I think those stand out a lot, like was a life changing experience. Um, I would think it would be, um, Maybe winning a f competition sometime, you know, and how inspiring that can, or how good that can make you feel, or even losing a competition, and uh, how that drives you to sometimes to practice a little more for the next one. And yeah, all of them have been, you know, uh, big experiences in my life. So I think it's just about having fun on the job and enjoying what you do at every moment, even when it's not so much fun, even the parts which are not the main reason why you enter a profession but kind of enjoying every step of that comes along the way, you know. Um, and that's what makes us better at what we do, I think, and makes us, you know, uh, strive at another different levels. And um, yeah, flair is what I enjoyed a lot. I practiced it and I try and make it a part of your work as much as you can, whenever you can. And um, yeah, have fun with whatever you do. From some mistakes, I would suggest say that like there were so many mistakes. In fact, 
in initially in the beginning I was I was learning on the job so I was experimenting I was trying things I wasn't supposed to but to also be curious about like why you're not supposed to and why does it go wrong and um, uh, I think a mistake or, or something that I, uh, one can avoid is sometimes doubting themselves you know go for it even if you think it's not like it's something which might turn out to be an error um, learn along the way and I think share those learnings that we get as we teach we learn so much more so start teaching people whatever you know and uh, teach ourselves a little more you know yeah that's that's something we have learned i think every space is male dominated in fact um, like if you step out of your play house and in india you walk on the streets and it's mostly a majority of men and that presence is overwhelming and there's patriarchy misogyny that just kind of exists very subtly you might not even realize it like until you are in a space which is not male dominated is when you realize how comfortable that space makes you feel how safe that space makes you feel um, yeah I think like women being in a space adds a presence of safety and comfort uh, for other women so it's it's tricky to say how subtle like how you how it feels and how it does not feel but um, examples small examples could just be taking people for granted stereotypes you know um, not uh, taking someone seriously enough because they might be a woman uh, having to repeat yourself uh, all these are little examples of how it can just be more difficult to work and not focus on your work and there's nothing else uh, bothering you know but uh, yeah that's how misogyny exists very subtle for budding bartenders mixologists out there I think just go for it learn there's so much information on the internet that you can pick up stuff from and try it on your by yourself like try it at home at a home scale level try it some flair move see what you enjoy what you want to know more about and uh, eventually like if you can work at some space which you like the bar team there or you feel like it's gonna you're gonna learn so much like join that space and uh, start the journey you know just go for it and experiment be creative and try something of your own I, I don't know about achievement but I know that I want to learn or I want to grow in a certain direction I want to understand sustainability a little more and see how I can incorporate it into bars at very easy simple methods which can be take, picked up by anyone you know um, also like learn about more about plants to learn how things grow not just how to like what's the flavor it gives and how to utilize it in a cocktail but how it grows what it needs what is it made of or like how does it help us or benefit us every ingredient has some kind of a benefit or a, it's it's food for our body so just to learn about ingredients more I think it's that's what's fascinating me right now and yeah there's no achievement thing as such but I think when we learn something new passionately like you just end up achieving some very cool things in the process after you know so uh, yeah just learn something new maybe a little bit of a performance that I do outside the bar which is known as contact ball juggling I got into the juggling arts much later it's uh, this is an acrylic crystal clear ball and after flare bartending and juggling with bottles and shakers like this uh, and multiple other moves this is a flare bottle that is unbreakable so it's great for me to practice new moves with um, when I'm not confident about like dropping or not dropping it so that flare bartending got me curious about contact ball juggling and also toss juggling so I think the most common way of juggling styles which is not uh, contact juggling where I'm rolling the ball or I'm always in contact with the object and involves more balance um, the understanding of balance which also helps my mixology in a way but toss juggling is something that we have most commonly seen which is tossing three objects in the air or three or more objects in the air it could even be two there's no uh, restriction to it because it's art and you can keep coming up with your own moves these are some simple classic three ball juggling moves that I'm showing you and there's so many more that one can learn and tossing with two hands and that's a little bit of toss juggling so these balls are made of silicon I also practice my contact ball juggling uh, juggling with it it's otherwise a quite large but usually your juggling balls could be a size that's comfortable to grab onto to hold um, whereas once I practice with this silicon ball I eventually perform with this magical looking acrylic but a crystal clear acrylic ball and yeah as long as I'm maintaining contact with the object 
and where well, you could also include a little toss in it. Um, that's a part of the contact ball juggling arts. And all three are very different from each other, uh, but they all help one another. And yeah, let me show you something, a little bit of a performance now. Just like this is a flare bottle and it helps me for practice. I started off initially just juggling 500 or 600 ml water bottles like plastic bottles filled with water uh, or any bottle filled with water which you're not afraid of dropping and breaking. It shouldn't be glass idly in the beginning and that's something you can try uh, some simple flare moves also with. There's so much on the internet but here's a move or two that you can try at home and a simple one is just taking the back of your hand and trying to balance a bottle at the back of your hand. You can even use your thumb a little bit from the side here if you notice to give it a little support but it's just basically the scent, finding the center of the bottle with your knuckles, opening your hand up and trying to balance it. Maybe a little easier than the bottle would also be the same trick with the ball but just balancing it at the back of the hand. Try not uh, keeping your fingers together open up the fingers and just taking it up and down left and right to get better control eventually you can toss it and catch it again and this can be a fun way that you can play catch catch with friends with a ball and yeah there's so many more moves that one can try another simple step that y'all can uh, y'all could do at home also pro probably or anything is just like a little spin half a spin with the bottle it could be a glass you know just trying to get the glass to spin on this part of your hand and it could be a bottle of course with a ball you won't be able to see it but yeah these are some simple tricks that you all can try at home and yeah, get more into flair and juggling mm -hmm. 